Everybody get settled in, get your set down, and relax. And I'm going to introduce to you our Toastmaster of the day, Colonel Gill. We are an odd group. <laughs> Getting up at 7.30 in the morning to speak. It is, it is strange to the rest of the world. But we now have our wonderful competition on evaluation. And what I love about Toastmasters are our evaluations. It makes us better. I was at another organization, I gave a speech, and the evaluation was, your stories are trite and your panty line showed. <laughs> I knew right then it was a woman because what man cares if my panty line shows? <laughs> you will never hear that in a Toastmaster club. So to get on with probably one of the most important elements of Toastmasters, our evaluation contest, I'd like to turn this over to Helen McCullough. She is our evaluation contest chair. Helen, come on. Thank you, Colonel Jill. We have got such a great contest planned for you today. I know I've been working on it for a long time, and many of you have, so let me just say my gratitude and thanks for you and for being here and our participants. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing our contest Toastmaster. And he said, just tell my name and what I do. I said, I want to say when I first met you. <laughs> so when I first met our Toastmaster, he was giving an evaluation at a district contest. And I said, what a connection to the audience. And do you know today, the whole world knows about his connection to the audience. I said it a thousand times yesterday, friends. And let's start with our district governor, Michelle Cabo. Yeah. Our lieutenant governor of education and training, Donna Western. Yeah. Our lieutenant governor of marketing, Ethel Gothi. Yeah. a division governor, please stand up and be acknowledged. <laughs> if you are an area governor, please stand up and be acknowledged. <laughs> the evaluation speech contest is a fantastic opportunity to learn. Today we will hear eight of our best evaluators. So please, turn on all your learning senses. But please turn off or silence any devices that make noise. Let's give our contestants the best environment to perform. Contestants, timers, Power counters and surgeon at arms have all been briefed and know the rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so at the minute of silence if time permits. With that said, let the contest begin! Yay! Here is the speaking order for the evaluation contest. 
Contestant number one, Anne Peckloff. Anne Peckloff, contestant number one. Contestant number two, Bob Roman. Bob Roman, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Ruth Princess. Ruth Princess, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Sherry Rainey. Sherry Rainey, contestant number five. Contestant number six, Paul Lockwood. Paul Lockwood, contestant number six. Contestant number seven, Michael Goodges. Michael Goodges. Contestant number seven. And contestant number eight, Virginia Bosserman. Virginia Bosserman, contestant number eight. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them. And there'll be no comments about penny lines. <laughs> Christopher Boyd, the best thing I ever did. The best thing I ever did, Christopher Boyd. should ever say. But unfortunately, I had to. See, about two years ago, I was having major, major problems with my stomach. Ugh. I even went to see a doctor. Something I never could do because I was in such pain. I was 340 pounds. I was a size 52, needing to go to a size 54 <coughs> because these pair of pants were too small for me. I went to see my doctor, who mentioned that I had all the classic symptoms. High cholesterol, high blood pressure, I had an accelerated heartbeat. You would think with a heartbeat of 90, you would be able to do this a lot easier. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And worse yet, he mentioned that I may have ulcerated colitis and recommended I go to see a gastrointestinal specialist. I was scared. I went to the most mightiest, most powerful source of education on the planet Earth! You too. Not just for me. <laughs> and I found that my lack of vegetables and fruits in my diet probably contributed to that more than anything else that I've done. But I hated vegetables. It tasted horrible. You try eating spinach and kale and broccoli. It's not good. But I found out about a new, relatively, method of being able to consume it. And I found that I love the way that that tasted. Juicing. Yeah. So I bought a centrifugal juicer. Kale, spinach, celery, cucumber, ginger, green apples, lemon, lime. Looks horrible, tastes great. <laughs> For those of you who are teachers in the crowd, I apologize. I do not have enough for everyone, so I cannot share. But over the course of time, I found that I enjoyed juicing quite a bit, to the point where, after a 
really bad episode on Memorial Day week. Oh, I was pain up. I said, the heck with it. And did a 71 day juice fast. Only drinking this. Now, for those of you who are wondering, how am I living? I mean, you're supposed to die after, what, two, three days of not eating? Not the case. If you get the appropriate nutrition in your body, you will feel much better than you ever could hope to have felt. And by drinking this, it helped cure me of ulcerative colitis. My cholesterol went down. My high blood pressure went down. My pulse went down. Everything started getting much better. And afterwards, I started looking at plant-based diets and found myself being even better as a direct result of being on that than I ever had been even on the juice fast. So I've been able to maintain all 86 of those pounds off of my body. In fact, this morning, about five pounds lighter than what I was when I got off. And it's been 13 months of eating like this, and it's been fine. Now for you, how many of you want to get rid of your high health care bills? How many of you want to prevent any kind of surgery? How many of you want to save money? <laughs> Last week I spent $35 on my grocery bill and for a single guy by himself who can cook, that's a miracle. Okay? You can't eat much cheaper than on a plant-based diet that I found. And you will regain your health. I recommend looking up Dr. McDougall, Dean Ornish, Joel Furman, and a number of other doctors that are out there. But for those of you who are also interested in the low-carb diet, I highly recommend the Echo Atkins diet, too, which is a low-carb plant-based diet as well. Try and get your health back. It's one of the best things you can possibly do. I know myself, I've been able to save a lot of money in both grocery bills, medical expenses, and I feel better than I ever have. So, in conclusion, try to change your habits by working with your doctor and a registered dietitian. Find what works best for you. Get yourself healthy as much as you possibly can because it's in your best interest and not just your health, but also your wealth. In my case, juice fasting helped me, and then a plant-strong diet helped me even more. And I would recommend anyone at least try and get a juicer. After all, this right here is all nine of your servings of uh, vegetables and fruits that you need throughout the day in one drink. <laughs> So, I would like to conclude this speech with wishing all future speakers and all contestants the best of luck in this District 30 competition. I want to thank everyone for your time. Our evaluation contestants five minutes to prepare their evaluations. Mr. Surgeon at Arms, would you please escort the contestants to the other room? Time five minutes from the moment they are seated and then bring back the first contestant into the room. Five minutes. While the contestants complete their evaluations, let's get to know our target speaker. Please help me to the welcome back to the stage, Christopher Boyd.
Christopher, how long have you been in Toastmasters and what motivated you to join this organization? Shockingly, I've only been a member of Toastmasters since May. I'm a member of Joliet Gestures Club 124 and District 54. motivated me to join was I wanted to improve my speaking skills and get in front of a group like this and not be a person who's trying to um, um, uh, read off of a paper <laughs> and get up in front of a group like this and enjoy being able to speak, which is something I truly have found that I enjoy doing. So thank you all for allowing me to present you. Now that magic liquid they can carry over there, does it help you with your speaking as well? It could. You know, it, it's, it's juiced up after all. I mean, hey. You know. Are you planning to publish a book about your findings and your achievement? That's a very good question. Maybe someday, but not right now. Uh, working on too many different things that are in the hopper but I certainly am looking potentially to start a juice bar someday um, and do something along those lines because I've noticed that a lot of people just haven't tried it before and why waste the anywhere from forty to six hundred dollars for a juicer and everyone's making them now ever since the movie Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead came out <laughs> so and I recommend that uh, it's about a Two gentlemen who went on several day juice fasts. One gentleman lost over 200 pounds, I believe. The other one lost well in excess of 80 pounds over a 60 day period. So, if you're interested, watch that. I will warn you the first few days, you will be wanting food. <laughs> but afterwards, your body gets used to it. So, if, if you're interested in that. But, Please, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a registered dietitian. I highly recommend that you work with your doctor or registered dietitian before you do anything. Don't just jump in uh, cold turkey, and I'll, I'll just warn you of that right now. Well, Christopher, you're a good salesman, I can tell you that. <laughs> I see that you're juggling, you said you're juggling a lot of tasks, and I see you are president of Joliet Gestures. Gestures. What's the most challenging part of being a club president? The most challenging part that I've found is uh, getting to know everyone throughout the area, the district, the division, and also getting everything organized. Uh, one of the reasons why I stepped up to the challenge was because I want to be in a more leadership role. Our previous president had to step down, and that created an open void that I wanted to come in and fill uh, to help the club out. And I've started to implement some different feedback mechanisms that we found very helpful uh, for our new members, especially and our guests, since after all, I was a guest not that long ago and a brand new member myself. I'm two speeches away now uh, from getting my CC completed. So. Great job. Now, what's next? What's the next goal after you complete your CC? Continue to be the best that I possibly can at everything that I can. You know? But uh, right now, the, probably the ACB would be next and working on the CL as well. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, so. Tell us who or what encouraged you to be the target speaker. ask that. <laughs> um, my Vice President of Education, one of the most phenomenal Toastmasters I've ever met, Paul Rapp. Paul, stand up. Thank you. Paul was looking uh, to help Ellen out with finding a speaker, uh, and he kind of enticed me. I was in Baltimore the last week. And so it was, okay, do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? I decided, yes, I did want to do this. So 
Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Helen, for giving me the opportunity to be up here with a world champion. And congratulations on that, by the way. We uh, had a showing of when you won uh, the world title at Joliet Gestures, and we were all rooting for you. Yeah, yeah, club, so, and there was not just our club, it was multiple different members from other clubs. So, congratulations to you as well. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you very much. I see your hobbies traveling. Tell us about more, your most exciting travel experience. That was a very interesting experience. I went to Kosovo not that long ago. Um, it was probably also one of the worst experiences I ever had, but that's what usually makes them fun. So, um, I was going to meet my fiancé at the time, and uh, we ended up having a little bit of a problem. She's from there, she was here for many, many years beforehand, and uh, uh, we ended up having a great time. Otherwise, though, uh, we went to Germany, we went to uh, Ljubljana and Slovenia, uh, a number of other places, and just had a fun time overall. Uh, between meeting people, on flas betem pak šiet, išprak betem, išprak vanik tojš, en šiolem je zipet, je to na Islandu. So, and a number of other items. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Christopher, this is a gift for you from District 30, and thank you so much for being our target speaker. Congratulations. We are ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, please signal me with the green line when one minute is up. After all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their balance. We will now begin the evaluation speech contest. Contestant number one, Anne Peklov. Anne Peklov, contestant number one. go insane. Maybe depression, maybe binge. What did Christopher do? Christopher went over to his computer and he Googled. And he found out a lot of really informa interesting information. Really out-of-the-box information. What I really liked is that he came in here full of energy. He came in here with his drink. He came in here with his pants. The visuals that Christopher was able to give us was so much more than even the words. So I spent time, of course, listening to your words, but I spent even more time thinking, wow, if this man could do this in 13 months, he can do anything. We can do anything. He is a perfect example of what a Toastmaster can do. And he brought it to us. He brought it to us as an inspiration. Now, my gift to you, if there was something, is when you're walking, you turn to your side quite often. It's very difficult to use props. Having the props here was good, and the height was good because we're a tall man, so that was good. But perhaps maybe more of a flowing walk when you're getting your drinks. I would have liked when you drank that drink, because I know what everybody out there was thinking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It was horrible looking. 
drinking. I would have liked you to have drank it and maybe gone, ah! And then said, no, really, it's really good. There's something, I mean, you, you had an opportunity to really work it, work the crowd. You had wonderful dry humor. Your humor was sly, sly and dry. So what I'm taking home with me, which is my what love to take home, is inspiration. I am energized. If you could do what you did in 13 months, and everyone here has done what they've done, the limit, we are limitless in our potential. So thank you, Christopher, very much. I appreciate you being here. May we have a minute of silence for the judges to mark their balance. Contestant number two, Bob Roman. Bob Roman, contestant number two.
Contestant number three, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox, contestant number three. talks to us about the fact that our body speaks. If everything is moving, there's no chance for our brain to rest. There's no opportunity for us to hear the message about why juicing helped you to get from where you were to where you are today. Now, that energy and that enthusiasm is going to carry you a long way. If we look at what a lot of TED speakers are doing today, they're Evacious, they're interactive, the crowds are going wild over them. But we may look at them as Toastmasters and say, this is a terrible speech, right? I would never grade this a high speech, but that passion and enthusiasm is what's going to carry you. That's what's going to make us forget something that happened with your props. That's what's going to make us forget about something that happened with coming in and being on stage and being on time. It's going to allow us to connect with you. Continue to work on those few items, continue to bring that energy and enthusiasm. Again, when we're laughing, we're listening. And my friend, I'm listening to you to find out how I can juice better. <laughs>
Contestant number four, Ruth Princess. Ruth Princess, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Cheryl Rainey. Cheryl Rainey, contestant number five. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and our 
our guests. I think we all are interested in health. So, Christopher, thank you so much for talking about a topic that we can all relate to, whether it's our personal health or the health of those that we, that we are involved with, those that we love and care about. The other thing that some of us don't always want to admit is that we're also concerned with weight. <laughs> so I'm going to focus more on the health issue than, than the weight, although they go together. I loved your visuals. When you held up that pair of pants, it really showed us how far you had come. I also liked it when you held up the juice, but I am not convinced that that green liquid that you have in that container is tasty. It's going to take a little more than a visual to convince me of that. <laughs> I also liked your humor. YouTube, it's a go-to expert for everybody. So of course, when something comes up and you want to know about it, you go to YouTube. So I was glad that you, that you mentioned that. I thought your audience involvement was also good. You ask us questions. You ask us to raise our hands. And when you do that, that gets us involved and makes us want to listen and pay attention to what it is that you're saying. So those are really great things, your visuals, your humor, the audience involvement. What I really would have appreciated was a stronger connection with the audience. You were telling an excellent story, a personal story. And I think when you came out, if you had focused in on someone and said, do you care? about health. Do you know someone who has an issue with weight? It really brings us in and helps us connect with you more. It's that eye contact. We use that in every day. We know that the eye contact is what really makes a difference in our conversations. As you were speaking, I thought your strongest points were when you talked about being at the grocery store. You were excited when you talked about the grocery store. I also saw more excitement when you spoke about saving money at the grocery store. What I think should have been a big point for you in your speech, you're a single guy who cooks. <laughs> you have a room full of women. Let everybody know that you're a single guy who cooks. And then you top it off, you cook healthy. <laughs> I think what will help you connect more is if you talk to us as if it's a personal conversation. I really would have enjoyed it if you had made it more of a story, and just really led us through the story step by step, and let us know the emotions that you experienced as you went through that. So as you become the go-to guy for weight loss, for healthy living, for juicing, you become the guru, and we see you on the informational, remember, give us that strong connection, look into the camera, give us those personal stories, and engage us in what you're doing. Thank you very much. Silence, please. Contestant number six, Paul Lockwood. Paul Lockwood, contestant number six.
The Best Thing I Ever Did. It's a general title, but it gets you wondering. And that's what you want to do with a title. Good job. The fact that you told us immediately what the best thing you ever did was, also kudos for that. We got to know the fruits and vegetables. I'm going to give you some meat. <laughs> the props were a big strength. Showing us those pants and telling us that that wasn't even big enough? Okay. <laughs> Showing us the juicer and drinking from the juicer. Excellent use of a prop. You also told us a very powerful story. It was both educational and inspirational. And I think being able to integrate both of those was a very good strength. When you talk about one's health, and someone is in their early 30s and they have to deal with a health crisis, you've got us immediately. You've got us in the palm of our hand. A couple things that you might want to consider to make it even better. One would be, consider the use of a PowerPoint slide, maybe just one slide. If it wants to be inspirational, if that's where you really want it to lean, then let's see a before and after. I think seeing where you came from and us seeing what you are now, I think that would have been very powerful. If it was meant to be more educational, then perhaps a list of those doctors that you mentioned and some URLs that we could look up their websites. Another thought is that because you had the props, you kind of had to stay within maybe five feet of the lectern. If you had been able to come out here and look at each of us a little closer, stay for a few seconds, get some actual eye contact with these people, I think we would have really even felt it more deeply that maybe juicing is the way to go. <clears throat> Having personally faced a health crisis myself, this was a very powerful speech to hear. And I think that the meat of the matter is that getting healthy and getting your health back is a very powerful message that we all could benefit from. Thank you. A minute of silence, please. Contestant number seven, Michael Goodges. Michael Goodges, <laughs> contestant number seven. Chair, Mr. World Champion, 
Toastmasters royalty, distinguished guests, and especially to Christopher. I would just like to thank you for having the courage to get up in front of so many illustrious Toastmasters. That is a major accomplishment in and of itself. So I think you should applaud yourself for that. Now, my goal here is to give you advice on what it is that you can do that will bring about the most improvement for your next speech. Now, although I may consider myself to be an expert, and I'm sure you've heard many, many opinions on what you should do to get better, please consider them and use whatever you think is most applicable for you. Now, first and foremost, I would suggest that you do a mic check before you come before your audience because it kind of it kind of disrupted your opening. Although you recovered quite quickly after the can you hear me now and you went on with your intriguing opening which was help which anyone that, that realizes how, how much weight has an impact on our health. So it was a wonderful beginning. I think that, that you have a very engaging style. Voice, you speak with confidence, plenty of vocal variety. And that engages your audience. I don't think that you use notes, although from time to time I notice you would wander over to the podium, take a peek. I think that you really don't need notes at all. It's all in here. You've lived that experience. So all you're doing is just sharing it with the audience. So please step down from the podium, come out to your audience, engage people. I thought it was brilliant how you asked people questions and you brought them closer in by doing so. I thought that you had some, some great gestures, especially when you you were bent over from the stomach pain, dropped the eyelids, suggesting, you know, this was a terrible moment. Those were all great. And I loved how you used the prop, the, the juice, and the humor that was in it. It was just amazing. And I liked the, the use of the prop, how you kept going to it and you said, Look, looks terrible, tastes great. <laughs> I thought that, that was a very nice touch. I would like to, to see that you get a copy of this performance from, from Tim and, and play that video back without sound, fast forward, and you will get even better. I fully expect to see you here next year at District. <laughs> Contestant number eight, Virginia Bosserman. Virginia Bosserman, contestant number eight.
Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, and especially Christopher. You had us from the title of your speech. The most important thing you ever did in your life. Oh my goodness, I knew it was going to be great. And then you told us that at 33 or 34, you got your health back. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what horrible disease did you have that you overcame? And then it was something that we can all relate to. A self-inflicted disease that most Americans have. Wow. You also used great gestures, especially the pain. Oh, I could feel that pain. And your vocal variety, the way you hated vegetables, sound just like my kids. <laughs> <laughs> the one suggestion that I have for you would be this. Was your enemy because you stayed here and because you confined yourself to this you only went back and forth when you did that gesture of your stomach you could have come right out to us and then you could have come over here and said i hate vegetables and some people would have gone me too <laughs> <laughs> then when you showed us the juice. <laughs> Looks horrible. Tastes great. Uh-huh. And then you showed us, and you didn't spit it out. <laughs> you were starting to think, maybe this is okay. One thing I would have loved to have heard is more of your personal journey. That's hard to do. So many of us have embarked on a new eating plan or a new exercise plan, only to abandon it the first time somebody shows up with chocolate cake from Pertillo's. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you do that? How did you stay on that? How did you manage when you were at a restaurant? or when you were at that graduation party. What kept you going? You didn't do it in six months. If you add that to that speech, you will knock it out of the park. That's all you need to do. Thank you. Everyone, please remain silent until all the ballots have been collected.
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you. At this time, let's get to know our contestants. Contestants, please line up in front in the order in which you spoke. Are you representing today? Aeon Reaching for the Stars. Hey! Now that you're a DTM, what's the next goal in Toastmasters? You know, after you get your DTM, you actually do pause and think, what is my next goal? And I heard some people saying, you know, I never thought of a second DTM. But yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> Mostly, I'm in three clubs, and I, and I plan on mentoring the people as much as possible, and my strength and the thing I like most about Toastmasters is leadership and mentorship, so that's what I plan on focusing on. If that means having to get a few awards in order to help some people out, I happen to get another DT, I want to know. So that's my plan. Thank you, and thank you for participating. Bob, how long have you been in Toastmasters? 33 years. What club are you representing? Club 8308, twice as nice Toastmasters, the only couples club in District 30. And what's your highest educational level? Distinguished Toastmaster. You've been in the organization 33 years. What has kept you so long? It is the mentoring that I like to do. I find it so thrilling to have a new Toastmaster come in where they're wetting their hands, they're so <laughs> unsure of themselves, and then they turn into a dynamic speaker. Yeah. Uh, and one of, the, one of those is uh, the most proud of is Jerry Evans. When he first came to Toastmasters, he was like that. <laughs> well, thank you, Bob. Thank you for participating. <laughs> Matthew Fox, how long have you been in Toastmasters? Seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. Wow. What club are you representing? I'm actually representing three different clubs. My home club is Aeroscreen. I have a lot of love for Westminster and talk of the town down in the city. What's your highest educational level in Toastmasters? Advanced Communicator Bronze and Advanced Leader Bronze. Now last year, you competed right here in the evaluation contest. What's the feeling of being stuck in a Groundhog Day? <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully you weren't there. <laughs> So it wasn't a complete Groundhog Day. It, it was exciting. I, coming back to the same room, I felt like I'd been here before. But it, it's also that surreal feeling of, oh, there's the other people I've competed against. Oh, there's that room with that dingy ceiling. Oh, there's that brown carpet. But I like the wheat. It's very nice. Matthew, thank you for participating today. Ruth Princess, how long have you been in Toastmasters? Since 2009. What club are you representing? Windy City. Woo -hoo! And I'm also in Cleveland Public Speaking and West Urban Toastmasters. What's your highest educational level in Toastmasters? Silver. I have not gotten my DTM because they won't let you compete while you're an officer, so uh, I'm waiting until I win a world champion. <laughs> That's a good strategy. 
I know that you've published a book. So for those people in the audience who would love to publish a book one day, what tip can you give? Well, first of all, you have to publish it even if it's not finished. As I said, I've lost 54 pounds. I did it while writing the book, but because I didn't publish it, I didn't keep it off. I am 23 pounds lighter than my highest weight because I got the book back out and I published it. So it is a motivator. Ruth, thank you so much for participating. Sherry, how long have you been in Toastmasters? I've been at Toastmasters for five years. What club are you representing? Millennium Park 6667. And you know my next question. What's your highest educational level? Advanced Communicator Browns. Now, Sherry competed at district level in table topics in 2007 and took second place. And she came back in 2008 and won the District Table Topics Contest. <laughs> what do you like most about competing? Winning. <laughs> That says it all. Thank you so much for participating. So, Paul, how long have you been in Toastmasters? I was trying to figure it out. I was in the Knowledge Speakers Club downtown for a number of years when I worked next door to where they met. I think I probably started there somewhere around 2000. And then when I lost my job, I was able to. Uh, find a wonderful club in Crystal Lake, Crystal Lake Toastmasters. Yay! Yay! And what's your highest education level in Toastmasters? Uh, CC and CL. Okay. Now, you've <laughs> you have acted in 20 community theaters. What do you love about acting? Acting allows you to take on a totally different persona and to have some rather humiliating things done to you on stage. <laughs> uh, just, just last night was the opening night of a play that I'm in out in Woodstock at the Woodstock Opera House, The Nerd, plays through the 24th, anybody wants to come out. Yeah. And that's where Groundhog Day was filmed, so you get the Groundhog Day connection at the same time. But anyhow, um, my character gets messed up pretty darn good. And so if you want to see some rather embarrassing things falling on my head and on my suit, please come see the show. Thank you for participating, Paul. <laughs> Michael Goodges, how long have you been in Toastmasters? For 12 years. And what club are you representing? I'm representing Broadview 3303, and then I'm also a member of Talk of the Town 3731. And incidentally, Matthew Fox is also a member of Talk of the Town. Yeah. It was great competing against one of my friends. Yeah. What's your highest educational level in Toastmaster? Distinguished Toastmaster. You're in self-improvement. What's one book that you would like to recommend to the audience for self-improvement? The Psychology of Winning. <laughs> I think Sherry Rainey has read that book. <laughs> and why do you recommend it? Well, I would, it's so motivational and, and if you can embark on a journey of improving yourself, and there are little steps that you can take every day, then you're going to be a winner in life. Not simply just contests, but life. Well, Michael, thank you so much for participating. <laughs> Virginia, how long have you been in Toastmasters? I just had my third anniversary. <laughs> and what club are you representing? My home club is Club Toast at UL. Yeah.
it's really, really rewarding. So if you are working on your DTM, that is an excellent project. You will get so much energy to bring back to your club because the kids have to do the same thing and they do it with enthusiasm. And you really see a lot of progress. So I highly recommend it. Well, Virginia, congratulations and thank you for completing it. Didn't they do a fabulous job? Thank you all for participating. The suspense is on. The rewards will be given at dinner. So just wait and enjoy the conference. You're good to, to sit down. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheryl Rainey! 